Recently, I released a video in which I highlighted some must-have comics for real comic collectors. And clearly, this was a tongue-in-cheek type of video that a lot of people really enjoyed. There were a couple of people that didn't necessarily care for me calling it a litmus test, even though everybody knows there is no wrong way to collect, and I've said that repeatedly over the years. So I just decided to go ahead and double down and release another video. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is to highlight some must have story arcs that you should absolutely be reading if you are a real collector. I think that actually sounds like a litmus test. Here we go. So again, this is all just tongue in cheek, just trying to have a little bit of fun. But we are gonna rip through a couple of story arcs that I think are really fantastic reads and I do encourage you to check them out. So we're gonna go through some good reads, we're gonna go through some not good reads and then I will also share a bonus book with you. The very first story arc is actually contained in Marvel Comics Presents, a series that was launched in 1988. The story arc that I'm I'm excited about in particular was released in 1991 and it was Weapon X. Barry Windsor Smith did an amazing job on this story arc. It runs from this issue, issue number 72, all the way through issue number 79. It is an amazing read that gives us a tremendous amount of insight into Wolverine's background, his origin, all of that kind of stuff. So if you are a Wolverine fan, an X-Men fan, a Barry Windsor Smith fan, this is the, the story arc. You wanna check this one out. I think it's probably available in Collected Works. I have several copies of it. I have almost the entire run in 9.8 that's how much i like this one i have multiple copies raw but i'm working on a 9.8 full run so one more to go with that fingers crossed that i can find that one so the next story arc that i want to tell you about is one that i actually couldn't find in the collection it is somewhere here in the room i could not find the specific cover that i wanted to to showcase it is justice league Issue number 40, volume two. And this comic was released in 2015. This is the start of the Dark Side War. This read was amazing, in my opinion. An amazing, amazing read. I cannot recommend this one highly enough. And there is a bonus book that I'll talk about at the end. But the Dark Side War for me was it, it, it was it changed a lot for me when it comes to DC because at the time that I read this I wasn't the biggest DC fan I read this story arc and I was captivated by it just just fantastic so this story arc actually runs over a handful of issues specifically Justice League volume 2 issue 40 all the way through issue 50. That is essentially the core story. There are some, some one shots and stuff like that. I wanna say there's like nine of them. I haven't read any of that. I kinda of stick with the, the core story. So a fantastic read. Uh, if you are a Dark Side fan, a Superman fan, a Batman fan, like everybody in their mother is in this one. So it, it, is, it is worth the time to read it and probably like uh, Weapon X, it is also available as a collected work somewhere in some shape or form. So the next one that I want to tell you about is one that I was able to find in the collection. And I actually just did a reread of it literally yesterday because I wanted to do this video. It had been some time since I read it, so I wanted to reread it. Craven's The Last Hunt. And I am going to show you part four because this happens to be my favorite cover out of all of the issues. This one with the black costume Spider-Man coming up out of the grave to me is, is the best cover of them all. The story arc itself actually begins in Web of Spider-Man issue number 31, which was released in 1987. It runs across various Spider-Man titles, kind of ping-ponging back and forth between uh, Web, Amazing, and Peter Parker Spectacular. So I will try to put a reading list up somewhere so you guys can find that. But that is a great read. And it, it, it doesn't really read like a regular comic. There are a lot more words in this, a lot more reading is involved, but it is a fantastic story of, of Craven. It's not the best story, I don't think, for Spider-Man, but it is an interesting Craven type of story. And so if you are 
thinking about checking out the upcoming uh, Craven's movie from Sony. This is a great story arc to read. There's also Craven's Lost Hunt. I have not read that one in quite some time, but Craven's Last Hunt, great read. I encourage you to check it out. I also will encourage you to sound off in the comment section if there is a story arc that you love that I have not mentioned. I will tell you there's a lot of great stories out there, a lot of other ones that I could have included, but I had to find some way to limit it to a handful to be able to share with you guys. So to that point, there I mentioned uh, a bonus story. Uh, I will give you the bonus story now, and it, it, it picks up where Dark Side War kind of sort of ended. Um, and it is this story right here, Three Jokers. This one, fantastic. I read Dark Side War a few years ago. And as I wrapped up reading that, this comic actually came out. I think it's three parts. It came out, I then read it, and it basically continued that story. Treat yourself. Treat yourself the three jokers. It it is it is a cool read. It it really is a cool fun read. And again, I don't think any of these are terribly expensive, so you can probably find them uh, easily available. There are two stories that I want to show you now that people potentially would have assumed I would put on this list, but I will tell you I don't like them. I don't like them. <laughs> I just I just don't think that they're great stories. Um, you may disagree. That's okay. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Struggle Bus. Struggle Bus for me with this story uh, that was released in 1985. I've tried to read it a couple of times. I just cannot get into it. I cannot get into this one for whatever reason. Um, yeah, some people aren't going to like that. It is what it is. It is what it is. Great thing about comics is that there's a little something for everyone. Uh, very much in that same vein, we have this next one, which is Secret Wars, the original. The OG Secret Wars released in 1984. Yes, I have it in a 9.8 signed. I also have a blue label of it. It is not the best read. And I have multiple copies of it raw as well. It is not the best read. Not in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion. The better version, I think, might actually be Secret Wars that was released in 2015. That one is like, it's a little bit, of a, it's a little chaotic with the storytelling, but in my opinion, the 2015 version is better than the 80s version, but you, in my, you, you kind of sort of have to have it as evidence of me having it in this video. So there you have it. Those are essentially my picks for fantastic story arcs that people should take the time to read. I encourage you again to let me know what I missed down in the comment section. And again, hopefully you recognize that this is me just trying to have a little bit of fun talking about some comics. If you enjoyed this video, I want to encourage you to give the video a thumbs up. If you want to reach out to me, you can do it on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. This thing on. Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yo, should you practice art or should art be your practice? I had a question, so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner God, you know? The one that's gonna be a master. The one that's more than a rapper. The one that's an educator. The one that seeks enlightenment. He travels with concepts. He's got the mindset expansive. He understands that it's time to bond with travel and concepts. Makes his mind convex. Sort of like when you look at a brain scan. Straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect. Now we in distinct rooms of pure souls, having them conversations. Synergy and combination.